So as the fifth theme of the course, uh, we will uh, look into the so-called dummy variables. And uh, this is much more practical uh, topic than the previous uh, themes that we have considered regarding statistical inferences or statistical properties. So we now get back to more hand-on, hands-on modeling of, uh, of a regression equation. And I will shortly describe you what is the meaning of the dummy variable, but uh, I can assure you already that there's nothing dumb about them. It's actually a very useful approach in many, many situations. So um, notice that in the hedonic housing market example, all of the variables that we have considered so far have been measured in the either interval or ratio scale. So we have, for example, the size in square meters, year, number of bedrooms, and so on. So this kind of interval or ratio scale measures are considered uh, uh, or called uh, topically quantitative variables. And uh, sometimes uh, people ask me that, okay, what should you do if you have uh, have qualitative uh, uh, qualitative data that uh, that is it possible to utilize it also in the regression analysis and uh, my answer is of course definitely yes so there can be somehow uh, confusion between uh, so-called uh, qualitative research and quantitative research uh, this doesn't mean that uh, that we cannot also have uh, qualitative uh, variables uh, in our quantitative uh, models in in my view this um, this uh, categorization between qualitative versus quantitative research comes from the tradition of sociology that uh, in fact uh, in uh, in uh, natural sciences uh, there is not such kind of uh, kind of uh, distinction it's only in this kind of humanistic uh, sciences and uh, that can also be a, in some sense a misperception that uh, that, um, that uh, also in uh, in econometrics we can do we do model frequently also also so called qualitative data. By qualitative data, I mean uh, I refer to more like uh, ordinary and uh, and uh, categorical data. And uh, uh, there are many examples uh, also in this uh, hedonic model of housing market where it can be qualitative. Uh, in, in this first first examples, I consider such kind of yes or no type uh, questions. Uh, for example, is there an elevator in the building? Is there sauna in the apartment, or is there uh, is there a balcony? So so and and the data might come in form of text rather than direct numbers. And uh, so here is an illustration of the of the how the raw data of the housing market actually might look like. So so. Uh, and the first column there is the di uh, district uh, described. So, so in this example, I focused on this tabular district. So, of course, there is no variation whatsoever in the first column. But then there is um, a bit more detailed description of the apartment. Uh, uh, and, uh, and this is the type of uh, text that I was referring to, that it's more kind of qualitative description. You cannot uh, regress this description directly in the, in the regression equation. Uh, there is also other, uh, I'm sorry that the, these, there is some, some kind of, a, um, no, actually, actually it's good to mention that sometimes also when importing uh, data from, uh, from some uh, website to Excel, you might also notice that uh, there is this uh, floor of the building, which is this Kerros in Finnish, that's uh, next to the, the year of construction. So somehow this uh, this uh, information becomes uh, interpreted as if it's a date, even though actually it's it's not. It's just an ordinal ordinal uh, measure. Uh, there is a variable hissi, which uh, which is the elevator in Finnish. So it it's it's either stated on or a, which means yes or no. There is there is elevator or there is not elevator, and then. Uh, then uh, kunto is the condition of apartment. It can be uh, either either satisfactory or good or poor. So the main point of illustrating you this kind of table is that uh, that uh, very often, even if you get this kind of data from some some uh, some uh, official database, it might also include some text. You might get some kind of. Uh, uh, translation errors when this data is imported from one source to another type of software that uh, it's good to also check that this uh, data gets correctly 
uh, imported. And uh, now the important point is that uh, that this kind of uh, variables like, okay, is there an elevator or not? Yes or no? Uh, we cannot, cannot uh, put this kind of text directly to the regression equation. It requires some kind of uh, pre-processing. So uh, the typical approach making this text to a dummy variable is then that, uh, that we will code them as a binary number. So meaning that, uh, for example, for this uh, elevator, that, uh, that we indicate one if there, if there is an elevator in the house and we indicate zero if there is not. So this we can do, for example, with some kind of uh, uh, replace function or if, if conditions. One simple way is to just sort the data. If, if you have, for example, Excel file, you can just sort according to this uh, uh, elevator, even though it's text, but it will sort it. And then you can just uh, sort of uh, scroll down the, 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 or copy all of these uh, values of on with one and, and, uh, and zero. There are many, many ways of, of doing that. And it's not always necessary to do it in a, in a complicated way. Of course, if you are good at coding, then it's, it's, uh, it's very, very simple. But uh, whatever way you do it, uh, in any case, this kind of text you need to code with binary numbers, so zero and one. So, so then it becomes a dummy variable when, when you have coded at with, with zeros and ones. So I repeat, when we have this kind of, uh, uh, kind of explanatory variables in the regression equation, where, where we have coded this kind of qualitative information with, with binary zeros and ones, then we talk of them as, as dummy variables. That's, the, that's what the, the meaning of a, of a dummy. So always dummy refers to this kind of binary zero one variables used as uh, explanatory variables. Okay. So the next question, having, having done this kind of numerical coding of this qualitative uh, text information, uh, how do we, how do we then utilize it in the regression equation? So suppose that we simply put this, uh, this kind of uh, dummy variable as an explanatory variable in the regression equation. And here I have uh, used the, uh, again, this uh, housing market example, and I, I will use now the Greek letter delta for the coefficient of this dummy variable, just to, just to draw a distinction and a clear distinction. Otherwise, this delta is actually behaving as if it is uh, one of these, uh, these uh, slope coefficients beta. So in fact, when we have this kind of dummy variable, then interestingly, uh, its interpretation is very similar to the, to the intercept term beta one. So when we have coded this elevator dummy, for example, with this uh, binary zeros and ones, so meaning that uh, we have zero whenever there is, uh, there is uh, not elevator. So for those, those apartments where there's not any access to elevator, then the intercept is simply beta one because uh, this elevator dummy goes to zero. But for those, elevate, those apartments where there is access to elevator, then the intercept becomes in fact uh, equal to beta one plus delta because there this elevator is equal to one and, uh, and so we have beta one plus delta. So for the coefficient of the dummy variable, we can think about it as an increase or decrease of the, of the intercept term. So here is an illustrative figure in the case of just a single explanatory variable X and, and a single dummy variable. So this uh, dummy variable, it would be this kind of capital D, so it's either zero or one. So in the case that, uh, that we have uh, uh, this dummy variable takes the value of zero, we are on this uh, red regression line, so the red color line. And uh, when this dummy is equal to zero, so the intercept is just uh, beta one. But when this dummy variable takes the value of one, then we move to this uh, blue regression line. So it's just a parallel shift of the, of the regression line. And then uh, the slope of this uh, X variable remains the same. It is still this beta two, but the intercept uh, is, uh, is uh, boosted up by this delta parameter. So, so we have then beta one plus delta is the intercept as I have illustrated in this, in this diagram. 
So, so that's interesting that even though we treat these dummy variables as, uh, as additional explanatory variables, but, but actually the graphical interpretation is that they are just uh, making this kind of parallel shift of the regression line. So in that sense, we would have then two separate regression lines for those apartments that have elevator and those that have not. Okay, so I have also done it with this uh, empirical data. So this is just the same uh, uh, empirical example that we have considered already, already before, also in the, all of the previous lessons. But now I also added this dummy variable of elevator. So in, in practice, you just need to include this uh, elevator dummy and, and model it in the, in, the, in the practical calculations in the, exactly in the same way as you would model any other exploratory variables and also Excel or Stata or, or whatever software you might be using is also treating it in the same way as, as any other, other this more quantitative uh, exploratory variables. So this slide illustrates what happens when, when I include the, the uh, elevator dummy to the regression. Notice that it is just this bottom row of the bottom row of the table, and uh, it indicates that uh, the the coefficient is here equal to twenty four thousand six hundred sixteen. So that would indicate that uh, that indeed there is some um, additional impact on the price of apartment, which would be on average almost twenty five thousand. So, so compared to a similar apartments uh, that do not have elevator, apartments that have access to elevator then would have a uh, 20, about 25,000 euros higher price. And um, however, if we then also remember how do we test statistical significance, um, I want to emphasize that the, the same approach to testing statistical significance of the dummy variables applies as as we as we discussed earlier for the for the quantitative variables so we can we can apply the t test we can apply the p value and we can also also apply the, the confidence intervals so now you can you can uh, rehearse your skills on this uh, statistical testing uh, interestingly in the in the previous models that we considered all of the explanatory variables were highly significant so now we have a case where even though the, the um, estimated coefficient of the elevator dummy is quite high, almost 25,000 euros. In fact, if you look at the, for example, if you look at the p-value, it's 0 0.3. So remember when we use the p-value, we compare it to the significance levels and usual significance level would be, let's say, 5% or 1%. So uh, we would need to have a significance level of 30% uh, in order to in order to reject the null hypothesis so so there is a very high risk of actually actually uh, rejecting the null hypothesis even if it's true and the null hypothesis in the significance test is stating that there's no effect with the elevator so the reason the reason for this uh, this that we are not not able to uh, reject the null hypothesis with the usual levels of statistical significance is that if you look at the standard error the standard error is also very high. So therefore, we cannot conclude that the, that the elevator dummy has a, has a significant impact on, on price. Um, so so that, is, uh, that is how we, we can also, also model the dummy variables. It's, in practice, it's very simple. You can just take the dummy variable and uh, include it as one of the explanatory variable in your in your regression equation and and that's it that's not very very complicated main point here is to understand what is the interpretation of the dummy variable so it's shifting uh, shifting the regression line in a parallel manner and in that sense it's kind of uh, just uh, additional component to the intercept okay so uh, that completes my, my uh, sort of introduction to the dummy variables. In the next lesson, I will then uh, discuss with you uh, several alternative variations of uh, dummy variables and, and uh, modeling with many dummy variables. Okay, so we'll continue with the dummy variables in the next lesson.